Have you ever wondered what exactly happens when you flip a light switch? What makes the bulb glow? This seemingly simple act is a result of a complex phenomenon known as electricity. It's an essential form of energy that stems from the existence of charged particles such as electrons and protons. Every day we interact with electricity in countless ways. It lights up our homes, powers our devices and even runs entire industries. From the refrigerator that keeps our food fresh, to the computer you're using right now, electricity is the invisible force that makes modern life possible. Understanding electricity might seem daunting, but if we break it down into its basic components, it's actually quite fascinating, it's like a puzzle and to solve it, we need to understand its three core elements. So, to understand electricity, let's dive into its three core elements, materials, circuits, and current. Ever pondered why some materials conduct electricity while others don't? Well, it all boils down to the atomic structure of the materials. At the heart of this are two key players, conductors and insulators. Let's start with conductors. Conductors are materials that electricity can pass through easily. This is because they have what we call free electrons. These are electrons that aren't tied down to any particular atom and can move freely throughout the material. Metals like copper, silver, and gold are excellent conductors because they have a lot of these free electrons. Now imagine a group of friends at a party. The free electrons are like the social butterflies, moving freely from one conversation to another. The electric charge is the latest gossip, passed along swiftly by these social butterflies. That's how electric charge moves through a conductor. On the other hand, we have insulators. Insulators are materials that resist the flow of electricity. They do not have free electrons or have very few of them. Materials like rubber, glass, and most plastics are good insulators. Going back to our party analogy, the insulator is like the introvert, choosing to stay in one spot and not mingle much. The gossip, or electric charge, finds it hard to get around because there's no one to pass it along. It's important to note that no material is a perfect conductor or a perfect insulator. Even the best conductors have some resistance to the flow of electricity, and even the best insulators can conduct a little bit if the conditions are right. But in general, conductors and insulators play a crucial role in how electricity works. They allow us to control where electricity goes, how much of it gets there, and how quickly it moves. Now that we've understood materials, it's time to explore how they work within an electric circuit. What exactly is an electric circuit and why is it crucial in the world of electricity? Well, let's dive right in. An electric circuit is essentially a path that allows electric current to flow. Think of it as a circular racetrack, but instead of cars, we have electrons zooming around. Now, a circuit isn't just a free-for-all racetrack, it's made up of four key components. First, we have the power source, which is like the starting point of the race. This could be a battery, a generator, or any device that provides electrical energy. Next on our circuit track is the conductor. This is the path that the electrons or our little racers follow. Conductors are usually made of materials like copper or aluminum, known for their ability to allow electrons to flow with ease. Then we have the load. This is the part of the circuit that uses the electrical energy. Think of it as the finish line where all the hard work pays off. Loads can be anything that uses electricity like a light bulb, a fan, or even your phone charger. Finally, we have the switch. It's like the gatekeeper of the track. When the switch is closed, the path is complete and the electrons can race along the circuit. But when the switch is open, it breaks the path and the flow of electrons stops. Now how does a circuit work? Well, it all starts with the power source. It pushes the electrons into the conductor. This is where the race begins. The electrons zoom through the conductor, racing towards the load. Once they reach the load, they transfer their energy, lighting up a bulb or spinning a fan. But the race isn't over yet. The electrons then continue their journey back to the power source, ready for another round on the circuit track. This continuous flow of electrons is what we call current. It's the lifeblood of the circuit, keeping the race going. The more electrons racing around the circuit, the higher the current and the more work can be done. But remember, this race can only happen if the circuit is complete. That's where the switch comes in. If the switch is open, it's like closing the racetrack. The electrons can't complete their journey, and the load won't receive any energy. But close the switch, and the race is back on, the current flows, and the load springs to life. Circuits form the basis for electricity to perform work, but what drives this work is the electric current. What propels a small device or a massive machine to work with electricity? Now that's a question that takes us to the heart of our discussion today. The electric current. 
Think of electric current as a river, but instead of water, it's a flow of electric charge. It's the movement of electrons, those tiny negatively charged particles through a conductor like a wire. This flow is what brings our devices to life, from the phone in your hand to the light in your room. But how do we measure this flow? That's where Ampere, often shortened to amps, come into the picture. Named after the French physicist André-Marie Ampère, an Ampère is a unit of electric current in the international system of units. It quantifies the number of electrons flowing in the circuit. One Ampère is equivalent to 6.242 times 10 to the 18th power electrons, passing a point in a circuit each second. Yes, that's quite a lot of electrons. Now you may wonder what determines the strength of this current. And that's where we get to talk about two key players, voltage and resistance, and their relationship known as Ohm's law. Voltage or potential difference is like the push that gets the electrons moving. The more the voltage, the greater the push, and hence, more current. On the other hand, resistance is anything that opposes this flow. It's like the rocks in our river, slowing down the flow of water. The higher the resistance, the less current there will be for a given voltage. Ohm's law simply states that the current is directly proportional to the voltage and inversely proportional to the resistance. In other words, more voltage equals more current, more resistance equals less current. Now, let's talk about two types of current. Direct current or DC, and alternating current or AC. DC is like a one-way street. The current flows in one constant direction. This is the type of current you'd find in a battery. AC, on the other hand, is more like a two-way street. The current alternates, changing direction periodically. This is the type of current that powers most of our homes and offices. So why do we need two types of current? Well, each has its own advantages. DC is great for small devices and electronics that need a steady and constant supply of current. AC, however, is easier and more efficient to transmit over long distances, which is why it's used for power lines. With the understanding of current, we now have a clearer picture of how electricity works. From the push of voltage to the opposition of resistance, the flow of current is what powers our world. It's the unseen force that illuminates our nights, connects us to each other, and continues to propel us into the future. So, we've embarked on a fascinating journey through the world of electricity. It's been a thrilling adventure, hasn't it? We've unraveled the mysteries of this invisible yet undeniable force that powers our world. We started by understanding electricity as a form of energy resulting from the existence of charged particles. These particles, either stationary or moving, create electric fields and electric currents. This energy, invisible to the naked eye, powers our homes, our cities, and even our bodies. We then explored the role of materials as conductors or insulators in the world of electricity. Remember how we learned that conductors with their sea of free electrons are the superhighways for electric current? and how insulators with their tightly bound electrons act like roadblocks, stopping the flow of current. Our journey then took us to the heart of electricity, circuits. Circuits, we discovered, are the path for electric current. They're the roadmap that directs the flow of charge, ensuring electricity reaches its destination. Finally, we delved into the concept of current itself, the flow of charge. We learned that current is the lifeblood of electricity, the river that carries charged particles from point A to point B, and there you have it. The dazzling world of electricity, demystified. The next time you flip a switch, you'll know the science that makes the magic of electricity possible.